Tonight I got another special guest, man. It's been a great week of shows. Can't believe already we just blown through the week and uh, had some fantastic guests, some fantastic male guests. I'm going to cap out the Monday through Friday with another. This show is really special. I'll tell you why it's special. Because this brother that I'm bringing on the show tonight, he's a very talented uh, man. I can definitely call him a friend. Uh, we've known each other for quite some time. He's, he's, uh, he's a creative force. Um, and uh, we're going to get into all of those things. But he is a, he's a musician. He's a singer. He's a dancer. He's an actor. He's a pops. He's a father and a husband on that level. Uh, and that's a bunch of stuff that he he is. But we're gonna we're gonna talk to him in a few minutes and uh, let him tell you about some things. He also one of the one of the really special things about tonight's show is this is his very first interview. He said to me, "This is his very first interview as an artist, and it just happens to be you know he 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 released his very first uh, CD, and um, we, we I got the single." Uh, there's a single out. Um, look, I'm just excited. I'm a, let me bring him in and we're going to get it all going and we'll talk about it because he's waiting in my quote unquote green room. I hope everybody can see and hear me well. Um, uh, my producer is in the building, Smoke, uh, Tyreek, Mr. Kim, and uh, looking forward to doing this show. So let's bring him on. Uh, very talented brother. Uh, come on in, Ashwine. Come on in, the first. Bring yourself in out of the green room. You guys give a, a round of applause. They, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> What's so, going on? Brother? How, yes, are you, how you doing, man? I'm good, brother. How are you? Thanks for having me. It's a man. pleasure to be here. Uh, you know what I'm thank, saying? thank you for coming, man. This is this is great for you. Of course, of course, man. You know, I, I hear you saying that uh we've known each other for a while. And I was thinking back, it's uh it's been like 15 years. It's got to be about 10 years. Long. Yeah. Yeah. It's got to be that yeah. long because we actually met as I was, as I would scroll past the uh, scroll, that's how they say it down south, but stroll past uh -huh. the uh, Tonic Club and stop in to do some uh, some karaoke. Yeah, uh, man. After leaving High Comedy Club. So um, it's it's been about that, man, about 15 years. Yeah. Yeah, it's a long time, man, and you and you, and you still look the same like when I met you. You don't age. Man, listen, black don't crack on the outside; it hurts on the inside. But Amen. Thank it you. It hurts it on the knees and the back, yes, sir. but it don't crack. Yes, sir. And you'll definitely feel that as you get older. You look, you look good too, man. Listen. Thank you, brother. That's what I was gonna say too. All the years that we've known each other, man. Um, thank you for the compliment. But I've seen you grow um, as an artist especially, you know, as a, from a young man also to the, the parent you are Thank and the spouse you are, but also as an artist. And it's crazy because people don't know Tonic. It's a, it's a, it's a bar, like a sports bar, and they would have karaoke night. Yep. And then I started having karaoke night and we would connect because, you know, that's what you do. You see somebody that sings, yeah. and, uh, you rock and roll with them. Now, before I do something special, um, how long have you been been singing. First of all, tell us, tell the folks where you're from, and then we. Hey, I'm uh, I'm from uh, Queens, New York. I'm a native New Yorker, um, and my name is Ashwai the first. That's Ashwai. like my real name. <laughs> a lot of people mispronounce it Ashwi right. I mean, on TV, and they messed up my name. But um, it's Ashwai the first, and um, I'm from Queens, New York, man. And you know, I've, I've coming up in New York, you're around a lot of talent, no matter where you're at. What borough, everybody is talented and you always got to be prepared, always got to step up your game. So, you know, I mean, that's, that's, you know, that's how I started to cultivate my skills by being around other native New Yorkers and people that just start from out of town or out of the country that want to come to the Big Apple. And like they say, if you make it here, you make it anywhere. You know what yeah. I mean? So you learn each one, teach one, and you, you know, you learn from uh, one another. So that's that's where I really like started to hone my craft in New York. Well, we're, we're definitely, we got another that other connection because I'm a Queens boy as well, man. I was born in, in Jamaica, Queens and came up. Wow. In so maybe that, maybe that was our initial, that energy. Yeah, probably. Yeah. 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 So we, we got that going on. All right. And, and I know, again, I know you as, as a singer, songwriter, dancer, performer, actor, mm -hmm. 
and all those things. So there's no don't no need to hesitate and not get into all that stuff. I met you as a singer, but then yeah. I I started seeing that you you did other things. And for me, yeah. acting was next. How long have you been acting? And tell the folks some things that you were in that they might have seen you in or might can see you in after this. One of my major roles or uh, major appearances was on the HBO show called The Night Of, okay. um, where I played one of the main uh, um, antagonists in the prisons, where okay. this uh, young Indian guy ends up getting connected with this white girl who gets murdered, and it's this whole whodunit type of uh, series. So that was one of my main standout roles. I was on for a, uh, a few episodes. And even most recently, um, uh, um, there's a movie that came on Amazon Prime that I did a, a while back. But I guess because of COVID, they kind of sped up the uh, production and the release of it. And it's called I'm Here on Amazon Prime. So I'm um, actually still here, still here. Still and here. I, I was uh, very amazed to see that, you know, my face is still in movies and, you know, any type of television. But um, I've done that. I've done HBO shows. I've done uh, a lot of backup dancing and choreography for mm -hmm. major artists, such as uh, Usher, Chris Brown, Shanti, Fergie. Um, the list goes on and on. Nice. But from backup dancing, choreography to acting, you know, a lot of people may know me from my roles in uh, certain movies that I've been doing since 18, you know, whether it's background or, or just being on the forefront with a few lines, you know. Okay, good. Yeah. good I definitely want to see what's going on. We, got a, we have a group of people over on Facebook that are watching and following. I want to ask those folks, please share the live, like right now. Do, do me that favor. I've already done it. Ash has done it. So I see uh, Val, and I see Jillian, I see Sean May, I see Tyreek, I see Tony, I see Denise. So could you guys do me that favor, and Bridget as well, and Katie and Lisa, please uh, share this right now. We've been getting some really great numbers, and I want this to be another one of those shows. So Ash, let's yes, go sir. back really quickly, man. Um, do you remember one of the songs that we used to do? And the kid, the kid, it was me and you and a brother named David, and um, we thought we would just kind of man. We, 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 we were, I know it was a boys and men song, and we thought we was boys and men. We, we thought we were. We you were. couldn't tell me nothing on there. Um, um, what was wait, it? What was it? Because uh, I started it off. Because these brothers, wait, this brother can blow. He can sing. So I was that one that you know. I I, I was kind of like Nate. And I'll kick it off and let them take the hires and all those other things. We don't What's even it? talk in no oh, water runs dry. We don't Bro. even talk. Oh, oh my God. goodness. <laughs> Damn. Oh man, that that was like the closer for us. Yes. That was the closer for us. We would close out the show with that. Yep, like, you know, they would call us on to do that, man. Whew, that's 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 wow. Yeah. Wow, that's bring back memory. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So that's how we became closer. Yeah, yeah. Got to know each other at karaoke mm -hmm. nights, and and then uh, just continuing on and, and moving forward. And, and so you, like I said, singer, uh -huh. dancer, mm -hmm. actor, choreographer, actor, choreographer. Yes. And uh -huh. now you play with a band. You sing with a band, and yes. tell us the name of the band because you can actually see some of your performances. Yeah, we will hear on social media. You can see some of my performances under uh, Ashwai the First on Instagram, uh, Ashwai the First on Facebook, and um, one of the bands I work with is Starlight. We do a lot of weddings. Uh, the Bake Bland, the Bake Bland, um, the Blake Band, <laughs> and also the Ashwai Five. Um, I'm a huge uh, Michael Jackson fan, so you know I had to. Uh, incorporate that but also going back to the, the us linking up during karaoke yes. you know you know it, in japanese karaoke is a uh, carry your own key you know but people don't really understand when you do karaoke in manhattan midtown you're everywhere you turn is broadway you have broadway singers you have people yes. on tour you have some of the like I've been to karaoke where the cast of Saturday Night Live, they would always show up. 
So you have these real singers, these real, you know, uh, uh, up and coming artists, uh, signed artists that are coming into these uh, karaoke venues to tune their craft. And in doing that, you get to be around them, you get to hone your skills. So it's not just walking into a bar and just, you know, doing whatever the hell you want to do. It's really like really being around others that are helping you better yourself. You know, so that's why I always tell, you know, up and coming artists, you know, you don't always have to be on the big stages, you know, really like fine tune your craft on every stage, any stage you can get on, you know, the audience is always different. Now, one thing I can't believe is that this is your very first interview and, and you've been doing singing and doing all these things for years. And I, I, I mean, I'm, I'm honored. You know what I mean? But I can't believe that this, that you have not. So how does that happen in a span of you doing all the things that you've done, not ever being interviewed? Well, you know, the thing for me was I was, or I am so good at doing for others and giving to others and being for others. I see the potential and the strength in everyone else. And a part of my purpose I feel in this world is to uplift and encourage. Right. So um, I was able to do that as a backup dancer for Shanti, um, as a choreographer and dance teacher at every, darn near every school in the five boroughs um, to uplift my students and encourage them to be a backup singer for up and coming artists, those who are signed and those who are work, working on being signed. And it really took a while for me to backtrack and look in the mirror and say that you're also worthy of the same things that you give to others, the right. same upliftment and encouragement that you give to others. And um, by the grace of God, I was able to um, take a step back during this whole pandemic and quarantine uh, situation and really say, now's the time to look in. And one song that's on the album, which mm -hmm. is called Jocelyn, I wrote that song when I was 14 years old. Really? 14. I always thought it was a great song. I always loved it as a rock song and it always stayed on my heart. So during this pandemic, I was able to have the chords and the lyrics and make it come to fruition, you know? So all the time of just having all of that built up inside of me, I was able to let it out, let go and be the things that I was, I was for others, for myself, you know? And now having more time. Well, you, well, you definitely, you know, hopefully, maybe I hope that this is the start of something beautiful for you, man. Because I've checked out the sure. the CD, listened to the songs, man, and and you, well, I already know you have talent. But, you know, <laughs> you know, people out there now, especially the, my folks over here that are new to you, will see that as well, and they'll support because that's what it's all about for us anyway. Is just yeah. supporting each other, and that's why I do this platform because it's not about me, man. I've got so many great people, so many great friends, and people have put me on their platforms. Mm -hmm. So I just wanted to do something for, for my folks as well. And the pandemic, it, it, it kind of helped. It's a terrible thing, but it kind yeah. of allowed people to start digging deep and figuring out stuff about sure. themselves and being able to, just, so be, to be able to sit here and bring people from all over the country and do yeah. things, man. I just appreciate it. So, so what, are you, what are you trying to do? Hello, Katrina. Hello, Nancy. Hey, Lisa, what are you trying to do in the near, in the immediate future because of the pandemic? And you know, most of the time when people drop an album or a CD, they, uh, they go on some kind of tour or roll on the road. Wait, are we frozen? Yeah, we were for a second. Are you back? Okay. okay. Yeah, because okay. I thought you was, I thought you was really focused. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, this dude is really focused. You thought I was like, this? Yeah. <laughs> like, he was like, really listening. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> yeah, I think a little technical stuff going on. But yeah, I'm back with you. All so right, I don't know right. if you heard my question. Um, like, what, what are you, what are your immediate plans? Because, you know, when people drop a CD or something, you usually go out, promote certain things, but you can't, mm -hmm. you can't really go live. So what are you planning on doing? Well, um, the, the, the album itself is more of a rebirth or giving life to 
who I already am in this life. So my thing is that, you know, I would love to promote it as much as I can via social media. I would love to do shows uh, if I can, when I can. But the main purpose is to have what was inside of me come mm -hmm. out. My main thing is that if I died tonight, I'd be happy. Who I am, the title of the album is The Introduction. Yeah. It's an introduction to who I am, my thoughts, my feelings, the love I want to share, the love I want to receive. It's an introduction to who I am. So even if it doesn't sell one copy, I get to leave this life having fulfilled a dream that I've always wanted to fulfill. You know what I mean? So even if I never hit the stage with a song that I wrote, but I've been able to sing background for other artists, even if I've never been able to hit the stage with choreography I've created for my own music, I've been able to do it for other people, but I got to live and leave what was already in here. You know what I mean? Right, so right, yes, right. I would love to do a show and promote it. Even in the midst of this pandemic, I would love to do as much as I can with it. But if it touches people, that's great. If it does nothing, that's great. It's no longer inside me. Like I said, that song, Jocelyn, I wrote it when I was 14. I no longer have to sit with that in my spirit. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah, no, I totally understand because when I was able to do that, man, I wanted to be a singer and be in a group since college. And when I had a singer group in college, when I got out of college, I had one. So my whole thing was I had a, you know, I have a passion for music. Yeah. So I, it was the same thought process, but when I was able to do my very first CD, because God obviously said, well, this is not how I want you to do this, was a group. I ended up doing my own individual CD solo project called The Romantic Journey. And I was able to have my original songs on it. Like you said, it's about just completing it and being, you know, fulfilling a dream. And, just, and, about, do, and, and I know you're going to get more than one person to purchase. I know you're going to get more than one person to support. I know you're going to, you're going to get Jeez. on stage again and be able to sing. You're going to do a video in this pandemic and put the video out at some point and, and fulfill more, more of your dreams and your goals because you've done, I'm sure acting was, 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 was one of them and performing live was one of them. And again, just have to know how to like appreciate it in God on God's time. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah, and, and for you, I know that when you finished rapping that CD, man, it's like it's done. And then it was delivered to you like that was such a like you yeah. said a woo saw moment. Yeah, yeah, and that's why they say that the grave is the richest place in the world. That's where billions, trillions millions go to die that's where dreams go to die because people don't you know sometimes we get stuck in doing things the way society says they should be done mm -hmm. you know you may not be the best cook but there's something in your heart that's saying bake a cake open up a bakery or write a book or write a song or play the violin or, or do something that's outside of what your family says or what people will see you as. But when you get that out of your spirit, man, it's such a, and here's the thing, this, this is the funny thing. Like Ooh. when the album was done, um, I felt a weight lift off me that I didn't know was there. Right. You know, cause I hadn't been, I hadn't been not pursuing my dreams. I done the acting, I did the choreography, I did the singing, I, I've been on stages, but somewhere inside, I wasn't doing it for me. But when it was completed, I just felt like just release, man. So right. like, I, I would like to encourage anyone that's watching this or that wants to, you know, fulfill any dream or, or wants to step outside of the realm of what they view as possible to really go and just tap into that, whatever's in their heart to do it because it's really a spiritual weight that's on you that you don't even realize. You know, I want I, I appreciate those words tremendously, but I want to tell you, stop, stay out of my head and stop doing my job. <laughs> So let's get into, this is usually the second half of the show is when we get real, we turn, we turn the heat up a little bit. Okay. Um, but you know what? Since we had technical difficulty, let's try something. Uh, mute, mute your video. 
Muting now. I want to see if they can hear this song called Pancakes. And, and let's see if they hear it. I want them to tell me how clearly they hear it. If not, I'm still going to put the link in uh, inside the live, but I want to see how well this works out. Let's see here. We can the first. Yeah. You guys tell me if you can hear the song. I promise I'll be gentle if you let me hit it. I promise I'll be good to you and not forget it. I promise I'll make you breakfast in bed and I'll fill you up right. I know what you done heard, but baby, just forget it. I know what all your friends say, but they must admit it. I'll make sure that you get yours before I finish it. Just give me one night. Cause I can be right where you are. Just tell me and I'll be outside. It really don't matter how far, as long as you feel me inside, yeah. Never been that kind of guy, throw my breath to the side, just for one night. They say, they say, they say that he just played in your heart. Never been committed, but with you, I'm about to start. Cause you changing my mind, and when I'm feeling you, it's feeling so right. I never been one for commitment, but you got me in my feelings. I feel like my heart is stealing. I feel like your panties I'm stealing. I want to take them home and frame it. I'm just saying my aim is to have you locked up in my love. Have me just wrapped up in your love. Can I be wrapped in your legs, love? Don't make me do it. I'll beg, love. I'll be on my knees for that real love. I'm on my knees for that meal, love. So open up. Let me just get a taste. Sweet syrup and pancakes. Turn over. Bend it up. Which ways? Turn it up. Open up. Guys. I can be right where you are, just tell me and I'll be your side. It really don't matter how far, as long as you feel me inside, yeah. Never been that kind of guy, throwing my breath to the side, just for one night. Cause I can be right where you are, just tell me and I'll be your side. It really don't matter how far, as long as you feel me inside, yeah. Never been that kind of guy, throwing my breath to the side. Just for one night. You know, girl, I'm going to be honest with you. I'm going to be real. Any man would be lucky, would be blessed to have you in his life just to be around you. Because the way you look is so sweet. You know what I'm thinking right now? <laughs> Whipped cream, strawberries, pancakes, the whole nine. I'll sop you up like a biscuit. No game, no lie. I'm just wondering, me and you, we can do our thing. Ready? Yeah. Cause I can be right where you are. Just tell me and I'll be outside. It really don't matter how far. As long as you feel me inside, yeah. Never been that kind of guy. Throwing my breath to the side. Just for one night. Cause I can be right where you are. Just tell me and I'll be outside. It really don't matter how far. As long as you feel me inside, yeah. Never been that kind of guy, throwing my breath to the side, just for one night. Hey man, hey man, come on back in. You know what? <laughs> I'm not going to tell them that I have a song called Cheese, Treat, Cheese, Grits, and Eggs, and you took another one of my breakfast. <laughs> hey, you see the pancake shirt. You see it? Give it up for Ash, man. Y'all give it up for Ash. It <laughs> was fantastic, brother, man. That was fantastic. And if you think that's hot, you guys should check out the rest of his, uh, his CD. Uh, Thank his you so much. Thank you. Thank introduction. you. Introduction. And I'm going to put that link. I think I'm, I still I have the link. I saved the link. Hopefully it's the right link. I don't want to send nobody no bad stuff. <laughs> so the wrong link. If it's not that, y'all forgive me. But just go go to uh, you can go to uh, YouTube. That's what I was trying to say. Yes. So you can go to YouTube and, and just type in Ash. It's under Ash Why the first. Why the first? That's right. And it's pancakes. Hey man, congratulations, brother. Thank you. Thank you so much. I appreciate you it. That song that way, and you used some some different things to describe some mm -hmm. different stuff. And we are in our second half. Let me first say, so that the people know, you are a father. Yes. Husband. Yes. yes. Amen to that. So you and how old is your son now? 
My son is four and a half. Four. Wow. Four yeah. and a half. Yeah. Time has passed because I, I, it's moved quickly. All right. Yeah. And, his, and his name? His name is Arion Ashwai. Arion Ashwai. Yes. Okay, four years old. So you'll, you'll know about these things that we're about to start talking about. Uh -huh. Maybe so, I know a little bit too much. <laughs> <laughs> let me listen. Let me start off like I always do with the same question I have asked everybody this week. It's about love, man. Dig romance. It. I wrote a book called Expressions of Love and Romance. So mm -hmm. what does love mean to you, Ash? And why is it, if it is, important to you? Ooh. Mm. So what does love mean to me? That's That's very general, you know? Now, if we're talking about what does love mean to me in a woman or in a relationship, yes, that's specific. Overall. Yeah. So overall, what love means to me is what the Bible says. God is love. I'm a spiritual guy. Okay. God is love. So I can identify with love when I see a vision or a version of God in that. I love my craft. Mm -hmm. I feel like God has called me to that. You know what I mean? It could be a hobby, it could be something I like, but if I don't do it, I feel not whole. I don't feel like myself. So love to me is definitely a, 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 a reflection of God. You know okay, I mean? and, and why is that important? Obviously, because, well, I know the answer because I'm a god fear man as well, but why is that important to you? That's life to me. That's life. That's the air I breathe, you know? Like, um, when you live on earth for a certain amount of years or you experience a certain amount of pain and different things, trials and, you know, uh, ups and downs, you can see why love and the fear of God in that is important. It's survival. You know, it's each breath that we take, you know? Yeah, that, that, that's, that's what it is for me. And what attracts you to a woman? What are, what are the three things? The top three things that attract you to a woman. Now you have a wife, obviously, and you could use mm -hmm. the things that might attract you to her. Mm -hmm. But just overall, what are, the, what are the top three things for you? Um, well, my wife is a very beautiful woman. Yes, she but is. what attracted me to her is her spirituality. You know, her her her, her yearning for for God. Um, mm -hmm. That was one. Um, I don't even know if I want to equate this to that or or have it slightly equal to it um, or below it is she didn't reject my love for my purpose. You know, wanting to be an artist and pursuing that right, and right. Not really having a foundation of it as far as uh, uh, um, resources. Yes. You know, a lot of people will shun that. You know, mm -hmm. if you don't make it big by a certain age, or if you don't really have an established fan base, people won't, won't support that. So, so her love of God, her ability to accept my pursuit of my craft was a major attraction. Mm -hmm. And just her spirit as a human being, just being a, a giving and open and loving and just, 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 just a supportive human human being, you know. That that's what really attracted outside of the beauty, because you could get anybody. Women are a dime a dozen when it comes to beauty, you know. Right. And then the standards of beauty constantly change in the society that we live in. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And within and within people, you yes. know, you you change yeah. as you grow. Sometimes mm -hmm. your standards change because you might be a little bit of yeah. you might be a little bit naive and ignorant yeah. coming up, and you don't see a woman for who she really is because it is just the outer beauty that you look so, at. And when you become older, more mature, and your eyes become clearer, when you get into yeah, more sure. more of a spiritual connection with with your God, mm -hmm. you see things a little differently. That's you know? why it's superficial, that, that fades, man. Yes. That fades yes. in yes. everyone. You totally. know what I mean? And I believe that every woman has their own unique beauty. Mm -hmm. uh, but again, as a teenager, you don't know these things. I mean, I was raised in a household full of women, five mm -hmm. of them to be exact. So there were different shades and different energies and different shapes. And But mm -hmm. my mother always taught me the values. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So, okay, so let's jump to the other side. 
What are turnoffs? Give me three turnoffs that you see. You know, on the complete opposite spectrum of what I just named: a rejection of God, okay. a rejection of my craft, and a rejection of self-love. If you don't have care for others, or you don't see the beauty in others and their flaws, that's definitely a turnoff. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I can't okay. date an atheist. I've tried. Don't work. Okay. I can't date someone that doesn't like me being on stage, doesn't like me performing. I've done that. Horrible experience. And I can't date someone that doesn't see the good in, or tries to see the good in others. You know what I mean? That's right. definitely a turn off. All right. So let's jump a little stronger. And everybody, these things okay. are obviously oh. subjective because, you know, you can't have a wrong answer because it's what you believe. Mm -hmm. in these situations and I, I talk with people like all week I've asked these questions and everybody's given me a different answer and it's cool because you get to see the variations of what people think or feel about these these things so let's jump to romance that's okay. the second thing in my book okay um what is romance to you and mm. how is it important in your relationship and how long have you been married now you said I've only been married. We are going on. We're going on eleven months, not even a year yet. Okay, so it's still the honeymoon period, basically. No, no. You fast that already? No, no, <laughs> <laughs> no. When I start throwing uh, hands out there, then you know, no. Okay. The reason I say no, and we were just talking about this a um, couple of days ago. We feel like we've been married for like five years because we had a short-lived honeymoon experience. Our original plan was to be married in April, right? Okay. So right. We were so in love and wanting to live together and be together that we moved the wedding up to January, mm. right before COVID hit. And who's, whose plan was that? Who do you think? <laughs> The master plan, right? The master plan. She probably play it. Amen. Was, okay. Amen. That's a beautiful and thing. Like, we, were, we were so in love. So we moved up the wedding to January. Um, and that's when like COVID was at its peak. So we were able to have a wedding, have family, have friends. Um, and by the time April rolled around, when we were supposed to have our wedding, the world had completely changed. You know, and all the vows that we said in sickness and in health, rich or poor, all that stuff, mm -hmm. we were experiencing in a short amount of time. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Yes. So when you say the honeymoon stage is like, we, we had to just. <laughs> that had to be put on hold for us. That second. was short lived. Yeah. We had to figure out, all right, how are we going to make this happen? How are we going to get these bills together? How are we going to do this? Everything shut down. How are we going to. You know, we, we had to figure things like out right away, and you know? One of my yeah. jokes when this thing started was this pandemic is going to either make or break relationships. Mm. Mm. And that was a joke, but it, the foundation was very serious because mm. of just what you said. Yep. Um, you know, because again, the financial thing for folks, even people that have been <laughs> married for a long time who thought everything was good and then the pandemic hit, people yeah. lost their jobs. Or you're just starting a relationship and now you can't see a person. Uh -huh. you, you know, you're just getting something going and it's like, uh, are you going to forget about it? How do you continue to keep the fire burning during yeah. this thing where you're not really not supposed to be around each other? So that's what, that's another thing. That segue right there. How do you keep it's it's you know, the fire burning to you? Because, you know, even in in the regular times, you still have to spice up your romance, your love, your sex life. Give me well, something you can tell you can put out there, uh, but how you how you do it? Because there's people out there that might learn from this. Well, what we did actually, even prior to um, me coming on the show, we we just came out from uh, being on a date. You know, we okay. went to a billiards, we went to a pool hall, we had a few drinks, we had brunch this morning. Like we always set aside time for ourselves, mm -hmm. and you know, we just enjoy each other's company as friends too. You know. Uh, friends, um, 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 being married, husband and wife, lovers, like we set aside time for ourselves where we just block out the world, you know? The, the, the economy is going to be what it is. Politics is going to be what it is. The jobs are going to be what they are. 
but we're going to block that out and we'll get back to it because it ain't going nowhere right, you know right. what does the bible say that um uh what does jesus say about uh, uh trouble like you're gonna have trouble you know not every day is gonna be good Mm -hmm. So we make sure that we set aside time for ourselves and we focus on each other and the good things going on in our lives in order to really try to move forward and be happy and embrace each other and embrace our marriage and our relationship. And, and isn't that a beautiful thing, man, when you can do something like that with your partner and then you, you're you successful, it's like you conquer something. You're like, oh my God, okay, we got it. Okay, so let's store that away. Oh man, we did it. Okay, so that's another thing we learned. And now you, these were bricks that you're building for the foundation mm -hmm. of longevity in yeah. your relationship. Sure. And and it's like, um, it, it wasn't overnight, you know. It took a lot of heartbreak, a lot mm -hmm. of bad relationships, a lot of, um, a lot of looking inward to really see who I needed to be for a woman what I needed to be as a man for myself and what God has called me to be. You know, it took all of that to get to this place of wanting to be married, being happily married, knowing how to move forward in a marriage. Right. You know, it took a lot of heartbreak, you know what I'm saying? Like I really went through a lot of pain, a lot of ups and downs and like what everyone goes through, but it's not always about pointing fingers. Sometimes you have to look within and see what did I do? What can I do better? And it, it took that for me to end up in this place right now. You know, one of the reasons why I did this week first on the show to just have a week full of brothers, uh, men, is because I talk with a lot of females on other platforms or just in general, and some of them have lost not all the hope, but they're discouraged, you know, mm -hmm. and, and and they're they're saddened and they're some of them are angry and they have the right to be these things. But these, this week, sitting down with the men that I've had on this platform, hopefully the women that have seen these shows can get some uplift, to get some hope, some optimism. Because even if you're married or you're with someone, they can still hear and understand and just kind of let it sit, cement in in their heart and their spirit that there are men out here still, and they're not all taken, but no. we think because some women are, oh, chivalry is dead, men today. And you're talking about, you're not talking about men. You're talking about kind of boys in the mentality if mm -hmm. they haven't gotten it. So to hear you say the things you're saying, I'm, some of the comments was, uh, Ash, you are a king. Um, perhaps says you are wise beyond your years. Tyreek says this too shall pass. Um, and and also, Pam also says that. bravo to your queen because of what you said about her earlier about respecting and supporting your platform you. and, your, and your dreams. And these are things, again, why I like to have these conversations, you know, and, and sometimes we don't sit down and talk. And yeah, there are some knuckleheads. We are, we are stupid. Mm -hmm. they, our foundation is stupidity. Sure. And hope women don't, sure. get, well, I, I say women's foundations, it's some are crazy, but it's, oh, it's, not a, it's not a disrespect. <laughs> again, it's my experiences. It's an mm -hmm. overall blueprint of what I think estrogen does to women and testosterone does to men. Mm -hmm. We have those faults, but but if you go deeper and you know that you, you look at guys for not the outer shell, and maybe you can sit down with some guys and talk. Some yeah. dudes won't reveal this, but you got a lot of brothers out there who so I'm glad thank I'm, I say all that to say thank you for oh, what you're sure. what, yeah. what you what you're expressing because it I hope it does help somebody and this I, I want this platform to be that kind of thing let's entertain but let's help as well yeah. you know yeah. so now I want you to do me a favor uh because we lost a little time I'm gonna, I'm gonna add about 10 more minutes on the show so that I can okay. when I edit everything will be be sweet I'm gonna put up the the uh I'm gonna put up your CD cover okay. and just tell them where they can find it Just tell them where they can find it. Okay. Um, <laughs> once again, the name of the album is The Introduction by Shwai the First. And you can get it wherever music is streamed, wherever it's sold. I'm talking about Spotify, Tidal, iTunes, Apple, uh, YouTube. You know, if you just want to get a feel of the album, check it out on YouTube, listen to it for free. 
Um, and if you want to purchase it, go to iTunes, go to Spotify, go to uh, Pandora to listen to the music. Wherever music is streamed or sold, you can get, catch the album. And uh, I really hope you enjoy it. Everyone that's watching, everyone that's listening, I really hope you enjoy the album because it is the introduction to who I am and there will be more music to come. And I pray to God that there is greatness that follows through to this. And, and really quickly, how long did it take you to complete the, the album? Like I said, the song Jocelyn, I wrote that when I was 14. Mm -hmm. The rest of the album, like I really, you know, put my foot to the pavement and said, I'm gonna make this happen. So about a year and change to really complete this whole album. Okay, okay. Yes. Yeah. So so let's let's have a little bit more fun with this love and romance uh uh thing. Okay. Um, we've all had good good dates and bad mm -hmm. dates. Mm -hmm. Tell us tell us if you can one of your your worst dates Ooh. if you can remember and why it was the worst one. Don't get yourself oh. I don't want you to get you in no trouble. <laughs> <laughs> no names or nothing. Just, one of, one of my worst dates. All right. So there was a period of time where I just said, I'm not dating anymore. I'm done with women. I'm just going to focus on career, et cetera, et cetera. I got back into the market. You know, the new thing has been uh, 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 dating apps. So I got on a dating app, chopped it up with this girl. We had a great connection. Let's go out. Let's meet. We go out to meet. I work early, 5 a.m. Got to be at work. The date was set for, I believe... Eight. She was an hour and a half late. Hour and a half late. So I'm already pissed off, but I'm drinking. So, you know, I'm doing an hour and a half, an hour and a half late. Hour and a half late. Hour and a half late. She says, blah, blah, blah. I, 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 I was going through traffic, blah, 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 whatever. So I'm already tight. She comes in there. I'm like, you know what? I'm going to leave. This is too long. She's like, let me buy you a drink. I'm already drinking. So I'm like, all right, I'll take a free drink. Yeah. <laughs> she starts drinking. And then we still had that connection that we had via chat on the dating app. When we started talking, she tells me, I really need a husband. My heart has been broken so many times. She starts crying. Mm. Crying on the first day. I just met this girl. She starts crying. And I feel like I just met you. Like, don't, don't, don't put that on me. Like, you know, I know connect, but don't put that on me. She starts crying and we start making out because she's kissing. <laughs> Wait a minute. We, we, we both drunk. We both drunk. <laughs> We're drunk. All right. We're drunk. <laughs> I'm more drunk than she, but she's okay. she's She's kissing me, she's crying, and her tears are on my lips, and I'm like, whoa, well, no, 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 I, I, can't, I can't do this. And unfortunately, unfortunately, I had to like press a pause on that, and I make sure she got, you know, to her home safely. Um, but the next day, she's blowing up my phone, she's calling me, and she's like, I'm going to continue where we left off. And I couldn't move past her, 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 the emotion. I wouldn't say desire, I would say desperation. Oh. Right, you know? right. Like, you know, we all want to be loved, but there's, there's, there's a tact to it. There's, there's a, you know, you know, you really want to get to know somebody. And I just felt like that was just a bad date, man. Uh, that's, for, for a first date, someone for to. For first date. Ex or like, blow out, blow out. Yeah, like that. She, was, she pretty much wanted everything to be set in stone right then and there, mm. you know, and it's not always that way. You know? Yeah. Yes. Uh, Tony Young says neediness. Uh, mm. Pam says she would have left after 40 minutes. Uh, she also says, oh, no, you made out with her. You heard the man say he did. Yes, he oh, said no. he was drinking. Oh, yeah. <laughs> My thing was he, that might have been her little thing to cry and get on your soft side. And I know. You know, she was drinking. Yeah. But again, oh. she might have some unresolved issues. Yes. Yes. Oh, and I didn't even say she was she was a weed head, too. So she was trying to get me to take some pulls of weed with her. So Ooh. not only were we both drinking, but she was drinking and smoking. Ooh. So like, you know, that was, that's yeah. not really my thing. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. We got, out of that. we got out of that one, brother. That was a very interesting, but we've all been there. I've been there. You know what I mean? Yeah, you're talking about emotionally. I, yeah, emotionally, yeah. like yeah. desperate, like, you know what I mean? Like, but, but we have to recognize or try to recognize it's not always easy when you're not ready. 
Mm-hmm. You know, we have to try to do that. I know it's easy to say it, but um, it's like <laughs> they're telling me to shut up. So Pam says, shut up, Sean, because it's oh no. Tony says she needed someone to help cover up past pain. That's what mm-hmm. I'm saying. Like mm-hmm. if this is the first date and you're coming out like this, mm-hmm. then you're not you're not ready. You know, you need a friend more mm-hmm. than you need someone on that level. Katie says she was trying to get in your drawers. Uh, could be. <laughs> could be. Now, well, you, you know, know, it's a it's a beauty in in realizing that you're not ready because you know um a couple of years before me meeting my wife i was engaged mm-hmm. you know i was engaged to my son's mother you know and during that process i had to realize that i wasn't ready and not only was i not ready this wasn't it this wasn't the relationship this wasn't the thing that make makes my heart skip a beat it wasn't it you know and i had to battle with that and i i fought with that for years mm-hmm. before i had to gracefully bow out you know what i mean right right so right. that there's a growth in that in the recognition and there's a uh, when the self-reflection you know when you take a step back you can really heal and help both parties when you're honest with yourself yeah Katie says sex is only a band-aid to the healing process but it can also be Facts. It can also be uh, a false sense of security because you're using it and you really not trying, it's, it's not really any kind of emotional attachment to the person. It could basically be about their situation, their issues, yeah. trying to heal that on that level or think they're healing yeah. themselves by getting that out. And it's a false sense of security because as soon as that sex thing, that sometimes causes more problems. Yep. Oh, you had sex with me and, you know, because... Yep still in that emotional state. So that's to be where it becomes difficult as well. Tony says she wasn't the one, even though she gave you a son. No, that's that's not the lady that gave him a son. You guys are mixing up this. No, no. <laughs> you see, you see how these women story. trying to cause problems? <laughs> uh-huh. Hey, Papa, Papa ain't a rolling stone, man. No, Come on, don't do me that, like that. That's the wrong story, Tony. Get the story <laughs> switched up right so we don't get this man in trouble. Hey, hey, Tony, Tony's Wi-Fi cut out on the, on the good part, man. Come on. <laughs> that sounds like a Billy G story. So, <laughs> I know, right? Hey, so look, man, let's, let's, let's have some more fun. Um, I do this every show with the guest. It's called Favorite Sevens. Okay. Hold on. She says, oh, wait, you were still dating while you were engaged? See, that? I knew that was going to trigger let me, something. Let me clarify this. I'll give you the platform for that one. Yes, go ahead. So I was engaged for about four years. Mm-hmm. When I realized it wasn't working out, I took three years to myself. The first two years... No intimacy, no girlfriends, no dating. The last year, I started to get involved with the dating apps. So that's where that date came from, the, the date that wasn't working out. Wait. Yeah, but I wasn't dating while. Yeah, engaged. and you're, now they're getting all. Uh, um, <laughs> Tony says no, talking about who he was engaged to. The lady that you were engaged to is not the mother of your son, is yeah, the lady that's I was the one. Engaged, she was the mother of my son. That's yeah. that's the one, not yeah. not your present situation. Yeah. yeah. Okay. See, because it's hard to because these they they come up like late. Yeah. So I can't that's, that put the story goes together. Hand in hand with what I'm saying about knowing yourself, taking the time to really look inward, not pointing the finger, but really, really identifying with what you want in life, the type of relationship you want, the type of woman you want in your life, and self healing. Right, yeah. right. No, Tony, I understand. My apologies. I, what's happening is your comments don't come up in the order of the conversation. So by the time you leave a comment, we've like we're like two or three minutes past, you know, the answer. Nah, Tony, Sean trying to start trouble, man. I've seen his stage act. <laughs> don't believe the hype. <laughs> no, Tony tries to start trouble. You should see Tony on my show last night in here starting trouble and last Saturday. So I got to be careful of Tony. <laughs> Tony Young was, Tony Young, yes, ma'am. So it's whatever. See, now the estrogen is starting to team up. Uh-huh. You know so I'm about to block all of them in a second. <laughs> so let's do this game, man. Let's have What's some up? more fun. Okay. It's called Favorite Sevens. I'm just going to I'm just gonna give you a list, a shout out a word or two, and you just tell me what your favorite is of that. 
All right. Favorite food? Curry. Curry. All right. And your 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 cultural background is uh, West Indian, Trinidadian. Okay, all right, I figured. All right, so you say curry, <laughs> that's hot stuff. So all right, favorite all time song. Oh man, nah. Mm -mm. Oh, it's got to be one. You got it. Uh, you only have one out. One. To... Uh, smooth criminal. Smooth criminal. Smooth criminal. Michael Jackson. And I see Michael Jackson back there on oh, the yeah. wall. Um, yeah, man. And are those his records around it, or just random? Well, records? we have um. Uh, Stop the Love You Save the Jackson Five. Uh, we have what is this? The Four Tops, Bernadette. Okay. Um, Stevie Wonder. What is that? Ribbon in the Sky, and some other records. My sight needs to be better. Yeah. Tony, Tony, more, Tony, more, oh, Motown. Tony's trying to kiss up because she said when I mentioned the song, she said pancakes. <laughs> <laughs> I told you, troublemaker. I told you. <laughs> Your favorite state? My favorite state? Yes, state. Oh, New York, man. Okay. No, 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 no hesitation on that at all. Yeah, not at all. Okay. Favorite time in a day for lovemaking? Um, twenty-four hours. <laughs> <laughs> you, I guess, I guess, okay. Um, you got to give me a time on the clock, though. Uh, I'll say two o'clock. Two o'clock? Yeah. Morning? PM, 2 p.m., 2 p.m. Two in the afternoon. Yeah. All right. Because everybody at work and everybody at school, <laughs> but there's that one, that one time of the day where right. things get done. Favorite all time comedian? Ooh, Andy Kaufman. Good choice. I gotta uh, say he's he's a huge influence on my career on a different aspect. But yeah, uh, yeah. I felt I felt you yeah. wanted to say Sean Kinney's, but because it's my show, you you just kind of slid. That was good. That was very good to, to, to do that. I was I'm gonna say right favorite records is pancakes, but I, you know I could have put myself out there. Yeah, you could have. Yeah, this is your show too, right? Now. <laughs> See how Tony kisses up. Well, she said Sean Kinney's. <laughs> See, See? Uh, favorite celebrity crush. Favorite celebrity crush. Who I be crushing on? Who I be crushing on? This one person that every time she's on TV, I gotta see her. Let me let me find her name. Hold on. What is this girl's name? She did a movie with Robert De Niro. This is All right, well, find her. I'm gonna tell them again. I want you guys to share this. You can still share it now so that their people can get an opportunity to see the second half of what we've done. Um, share it to your groups, share it to other groups, share it to your page, and please go to Sean Cornelius Entertainer on YouTube and subscribe to the YouTube channel. And hopefully all eight of you have already subscribed. And then when you share it, some of your other friends, because uh, this is a really nice platform and uh, it, it's, it's, it's feeling good. So we're going to continue to maneuver this. You still trying to find the lady? I'm trying to find it. It's she's like this. If that's your crush, and you just don't, you just don't have it. Well, I, 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 yeah, I guess she wouldn't be a real crush. She's just right. like, she's just cute to see on TV. That's a visual. Yeah, crush. yeah, oh, yeah. Well, all right. Well, just if you let's get post, back to that one. Yeah, I would pass, but I don't have a pass button. But you pass on that one, and you come <laughs> back to it. Favorite black TV show. Mm. Favorite black TV show, probably. Between Martin and the Cosby Show, man. Yeah. All right, pick one. You know what? Living single. Nah, living was... single. <laughs> Martin. Nah, that, nah, that, probably that Martin. Was... No, living. Yeah. Living all, single. Like if, if my show. life depended on it, it would be living single. Okay. Yeah. Uh, great show. Pam is trying to start trouble with you. She. This is this is how God works. She said she's not his curse. <laughs> Instead of crush, she put the U and the R backwards. That's and right. She's curse. not my curse. That's crush. right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, you got through that, man. You got past that one really good. You know. Uh, what did she say? Katie says she's now second to his wife. See, we we're not. See how you're starting trouble. Listen, Katie. Don't have me. We already know. He knows what's happening. We know he has a wife. And she knows what, what's going on. Stop uh -huh. starting trouble. <laughs> but you safe, man. You almost out of here, Ash. You almost out of here. Please tell the people, man. We're gonna we're gonna kick it for a few more minutes. But okay. tell the people right now 
where they can find you and connect with you and support you as far as your social media. You can hit me up on Instagram or Facebook at Ashwai the first. That's A S H W I the number one S T Ashwai the first. Everywhere. Okay. Everywhere. That's and on everywhere. YouTube. Everywhere. Everywhere. Okay. No, Pam, you spell up. Pam told me shut up. You spell <laughs> up. That's what you do and get it right. <laughs> so Ash, what do you have planned? for the immediate future. Uh, we know the pandemic was happening, but like mm -hmm. I, we, all are, we all should be planning things for this opening when it ever comes. What, what, what's, on your, what's on your table? Well, I definitely want to start doing the music video portions of the album. I'm gonna start shooting videos for some of those singles and releasing that on social media platforms. Um, and when things start to open up, you know, have my band ready, and ready to do these shows, man. Great. Right. And, I, and I cannot leave this show. We've already talked about what we used to do in the karaoke bar. Mm. But, but Ash has performed on stage with me at the legendary BB Kings <laughs> a couple of times. And yeah. what I'm going to do is I'm going to find get that footage off of YouTube, but I'm going to insert a piece of it okay. in the actual. Okay. But Ash, Ash, it was just me and Ash one time doing my girl together we were yeah. we were the we were all the temptations <laughs> i know right we were everybody we were, we were everybody. everybody and and we also did uh we did the my girl thing in the promo that i'm going to share the link so they can see you as well okay. and god willing you know things open up nice and clean um i got plans for the legends of soul show this time mm -hmm. around, because we were trying to do it, but we just couldn't get our schedules together. Yeah, yeah. Happening. But even music, we get, we need to sit down and do some music or something together. Yeah, I'm ready when you are, man. I'm and, ready. And, and before we I close this off, man, thank you so much for being here. I appreciate Thanks you. Thanks for having me, bro. I'm for sure real. my people appreciate you because uh, they've been hanging out. Even Thanks for watching, technical, everybody. Yeah, technical difficulties. Please give your final word uh, uh, a message or whatever you want to say, take a minute and give your final word. Okay, hold on, let me, let me get a microphone because I'm obsessed <laughs> with you. Um, but whatever you guys, whoever's watching out there, whatever you want to do in your life that seems outside of the norm, that seems outside of what friends and family think you should be doing, but it sits on your spirit, it sits in your heart, take a chance and do it. You see the way the world is. You see being in quarantine. You see the pandemic. This is the time to really tap into your spirit, to tap into your heart, to really like take time and focus on the things you love, your passion, and move towards that, the things that make you happy. Don't live for others. One thing that my brother said to me in my darkest times, um, when I was going like back and forth with things that shouldn't be in my life, he said to me, when you're in that coffin, only you can fit in there. Only one person can fit in that coffin. Right. So don't worry about everybody else. Don't try to do for everybody else. Don't try to make everybody happy. So there's something inside of you that you're not doing. If you're not doing it, if you're not pursuing it, please do. That's what I want to leave you with. Hey, man, appreciate that. And much love to you. And all my guests get something from me because I'm so appreciative. You know, I can't pay anybody any kind of, you know, fee to come on and hang out, but I will, I will yeah. send you, I'll get your address and I'm going to send you an enough is enough button and enough is enough um, water bottle because these, this is what's special to me and serious to me about trying to change the mentality of all this negativity in, mm -hmm. in our space, in our mm -hmm. country with people. And that's my thing. Enough is enough. So I appreciate you so much and I'm going to get your information and send you and your wife and uh, a you. button and uh, hey Ash, God bless you, man. Everybody on the line says thank you for your greatness. Uh, Tyreek, my producer says thank you for a great show. Best of luck, Ash. Uh, Appreciate it. Pam is threatening me. Pam is threatening me because of her spelling <laughs> situation. Uh, but everybody on Facebook, thank you so much again for coming through. Denise, a production assistant. And uh, <clears throat> as I always close the show out, I say please go with God in your heart. Have a peace of mind. Have a wonderful, wonderful tomorrow. And uh, I'll catch you around the corner again on the next After Dark with Sean Kinnears. I am Sean Kinnears. God bless you guys. Take care of yourselves. Be safe. If you're out, wear your mask. Ash, 
We'll catch up, brother. God bless Have a you, good bro. night. Thanks man. for having me. Thank you. No doubt.